Hey guys, what's up? It's Scottish Duck here once again, and this is going to be uh, my review slash thoughts on for binary domain. Okay then. Right, let's just get right into this. Now, right off the bat, I'm just going to say this game is pretty damn good. Okay, I highly recommend it. Not disappointing in the slightest. Uh, if that's all you needed to know, then stop watching the video now. If that's not what you wanted to know, then let me elaborate a bit more. So yeah. Binary Domain is the first game, uh, technically the first game, by Sega's newly announced uh, Ryoga Gotoku Studio. Uh, the studio that makes all the Yakuza games uh, around Japan and all that. And uh, obviously the uh, team existed before to make all the previous Yakuza games, but this was their first, um, you know, release as a studio. Okay, point, pointless backstory aside, it's not... It's running off the Yakuza engine, but funnily enough, it is a third-person shooter, you know? A genre which is not popular in Japan. Uh, I'm guessing the reason for this is because we have seen instances of uh, Japanese publishers trying to uh, appeal to the West and usually failing, like um, Namco Bandai's Quantum Theory and Square Enix's uh, Mind Jack. Don't actually, I don't actually know that game. I just know a lot of people hate it. But Sega seemed to be undeniably the uh, best Japanese company, at, you know, appealing to the West. At least when making shooters, because not only do we have Binary Domain. We also have... I do this in every fucking video, I can't stop this. Yeah, we also have, um, Vanquish. Which was made by Platinum Games, you know, so technically not Sega, but they published it and... Yeah, it just shows Sega's uh, track record of Japanese, um, third-person shooters is really good. So yeah, so what makes Binary Domain stick out? Well, first of all, I'll talk about uh, the story. The story here is typically, well, actually, let's compare it to the story in Vanquish, shall we? The story in Vanquish was an absolute joke, it really was. There was... It was like Resident Evil, only released in 2010. You know, the the characters' actions made no sense, everybody was one-dimensional, and the plot twists were... Not even plot twists! Uh, but yeah... Binary Domain, however, is a massive step up from that. Now, granted, I don't hold Vanquish... Uh, in any low regard because of its story, you know, that's like picking on a Mega Man for its story. But this is from the Yakuza team, so obviously my expectations were high for a good story. And it really is, it's about being set in the uh, not-so-distant future, 2080, and uh, machines have like uh, started to develop really advanced AI. Uh, they haven't taken over the world, you know, but they are getting so advanced to the point where they can live amongst humans and... Uh, uh, they can, you know, pose as them. And these are called a uh, Hollow Children. And basically, you play as a uh, Dan here, and you and your team of soldiers, whatever, have to go to Japan, because that's where all the robots get made, and, you know, shoot them all down. And, yeah. Overall, the story is really fucking amazing, though. Uh, if, if you're a Yakuza fan, you know, you can definitely you know, go into this expecting a lot, because it, it's got that same level of, like, um, Emotional impact, you know, for lack of a better word. It's, it really draws you in, and it feels like you really feel satisfied. It's a, got a good sort of JRPG-esque story. You know, you can really tell the difference between a story, a good Japanese story, and a good, like, um, American story. It's bit, well, consider, like, Gears of Wars' plot, right? Which is And Killzone's plot, which is relatively non-existent, you know? It's kind of just there for the ride. Binary Domains definitely takes it a step forward, and... Gets you really thinking about a lot of things and is just entertaining until the end. So, overall, really good story. The characters, however, are... They're kind of stereotypical. Now, I can't help but think that this is probably because this was a game made in Japan, you know. And what's maybe stereotypical to uh, us and the rest of the non-Japanese population is probably kind of... Uh, you know, to the Japanese people, it seems kind of interesting, because, you know, you don't see that that much. But, uh, yeah, the characters are mega stereotypical. You've got your, like, grunt uh, American dude who's spouting out uh, cheesy one-liners. You've got your token black guy who's just there to say brother and fool. And you've got your hot Asian love interest girl. And also a... Uh, a commanding officer, which just who just happens to be British. Now, the whole multinational thing is actually a uh, tie into the story, you know. But I'll get to that in a minute. And uh, I actually forgot to say as well, 
bef when this game was announced, this game was announced in 2010, right? The very first trailer for it was absolutely terrible. It was like a parody of fucking, you know, typical uh, games at the time, you know, just absolute grunts, you know, you were fighting off robots, granted it wasn't like, you know, aliens, it was robots, but it still looked so fucking facepalm, you know, this was coming from the Yakuza team, not gonna buy it, but as the months went on, more footage was released, and it was actually getting more promising, so, and in the end it turned out really good, so. Right, I've went on enough about the story, I'll talk about gameplay, shall I? Uh, it's a typical third person affair, if you've played Gears of War you will know exactly what to do. Although, there are certain tweaks here and there that are in Gears of War, and because, you know, that franchise has perfected the cover-based shooter uh, so much, you just kind of ex it plays so much like it, you just kind of expect it to play like it. One that kept uh, catching me off guard was that you can't remove yourself from cover as you're reloading, you know? It may not sound like a big thing, but there were times where I pop my head out, shoot a bit, and instantly, you know, by instinct, I just uh, tap a uh, reload, you know, so he begins his reload animation. But as he's doing that, see, I was playing Gears of War, I wanted to move away from the cover and, you know, move somewhere else. And I can do that in Gears of War, you can't do it here, you've got to wait till his reload animation finishes, then you can move from your cover. And again, that doesn't sound like a little thing, but it was something I kept noticing, and just little itty bitty non-perfected -perf tweaks like that to the controls are kind of present throughout the game. And... They shouldn't bug you that much, but they are there. So yeah, if your brain is so accustomed to playing uh, Gears of War, uh, take a bit of uh, go into this with a bit of caution, basically. Uh, the other sort of um, unique things about the gameplay, though, is the voice command thing. You know, you can talk into your headset or your Kinect if you're playing it on Xbox 360, and you know, just shout commands to your officers. And it's a uh, Apparently the voice command works, I didn't even try it to be honest, but uh, the whole issue in commands thing doesn't affect gameplay that much. All it does is, um, you know, you can say things like cover me, regroup, uh, fire, and what was the other one? Um, there was four main commands you can say. Well basically, all, all things like that, right? And I don't think it really changes how the game plays to be honest. You know, your squad members will still move pretty much freely and what they do doesn't really affect you you know you can say cover me so you can like move to another uh, bit of cover and maybe this is actually helpful on the higher difficulty settings but I played it on normal and I didn't really affect it so I was really just um while I was shooting I just remembered it was there basically so I would hit the buttons to issue a command and something would happen and sometimes they would do it sometimes they wouldn't and that was pretty much it. So it's not as fleshed out as it should be, okay? But it is there, and it is one of the things that makes the game unique. So, you know, I give I give them thumbs up for creativity. Uh, the other one is sort of a trust meter that's present throughout the game for each of your characters. The higher, the better you play, the higher the trust goes, and it go, can go all the way up to the top by the end of the game. And I think, I can't actually confirm this, because I only played the game once. I'm currently playing for it a second time. Uh, the only thing I can... I think it does change cutscenes slightly. You know, maybe they'll just be a bit more trustworthy to you, or you'll just see them say something different. You know, just minor things like that. I doubt it can. I doubt it changes the overall story or ending. Maybe it changes the ending. I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't know. You should probably look that up. But apparently, it features four hours of cutscenes in total. Okay, which just blows my mind because that's about the length of your standard third-person shooter today. You know. Anyway, I was going to sneeze there and it's probably going to come back in a bit. Uh, what else to talk about? The game actually is pretty damn easy. Okay, I, I, I can't deny that. Well, it's not e it's easy in the fact that you don't get game over a lot. You will go down, you know, relatively frequently. But throughout the game you can pick up these med kits and your guy will like go and inject something into him and all of a sudden he can walk about again. And if you run out of those, which does kind of happen... Uh, one of your AI members will come along and uh, revive you for you. Because they don't die that often. They probably die a lot more often in the uh, higher difficulty settings because then you've got to be more careful. But playing through it normal, they don't die that much. So you'll get hundreds of opportunities you know, to be revived and stuff. And I think I prefer that sort of system rather than just going back to the last checkpoint. Now, I did die a few times, though, during some uh, 
at the set piece moments, you know, there'll be those instances where you'll uh, be on the back of a truck, you know, shooting, shooting, whatnot, or uh, times where you'll actually be on a vehicle. And those moments really shone out to me. Those, you know, it just shows how well paced the whole campaign was. Uh, one that really stands out to me was when you were on the roof of a van and, you know, you were just shooting robot pursuers and you were in the real sort of futuristic part of uh, Tokyo at that point and everything was just around you and it just looked beautiful. There was so much detail. And just the fact that you were zooming past it, it really blew my mind. Uh, hundreds of detail went into the environments. Uh, with that said, I guess I'll go into the graphics now. Sega are actually... Um, this is something they've always been sort of lacking this generation, you know, graphical presentation. Their games do look good, aesthetically, but technically, you know, they've never really released anything on par with uh, Gears of War or Killzone. I keep bringing up those games, don't I? I really like those games, you know, they're good shooters. Um, so yeah, and Binary Domain is probably one of the best games they've ever released graphically, to be honest, but it's, it's still not quite there, you know. But with that said, there are there's tons of detail, there's tons of variety, and, you know, the actual presentation and work that went into it is just completely, you know, it's it's impossible to miss. Like, I should have touched this up in when I was talking about gameplay, but fighting off robots is fucking awesome, okay? You know, you're shooting down the robots and you see all their bits flying off them as you're shooting them. It looks so friggin' realistic and it's so satisfying and violent looking actually even though because to the robot and you know you can shoot off their arm and then they'll start picking up their gun with their other arm you can shoot off their legs they'll start crawling to you and the thing that i got really good at you can shoot off their head and they'll start shooting each other so yeah the amount of time that went into the actual robot designs and how they their limbs fall off and that is definitely present you know not to mention the variety in the enemies as well at one point, I was fighting regular mercenary type uh, uh, robots. Uh, then I was fighting robot monkeys. Then I was fighting a robot biker gang. Then I was fighting robot ninjas. Then I was fighting robot zombies. Play the game and find out. They're all in there, I promise you. Uh, See, so yeah, it's a lot of work went into the actual look of the game. But at the same time, it's not really technically pros, you know. Um, was that all I wanted to say? Uh, camp the campaign's about, it took me a bit over 8 hours, I know that because it'll like, uh, tell you how much uh, time you spent on it. I don't think the cutscenes count, um, you know, because I know some games do do that, <coughs> it'll give solid for it. <coughs> uh, but yeah, overall real satisfying campaign. Uh, there is multiplayer, but I don't give a shit about multiplayer, so I didn't play it. But Kazuma Kiryu is a playable character in the multiplayer, so 10 out of 10, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, th I think that's everything I wanted to say about it. Um, overall, yeah, I'm really fucking pleased with this. Uh, everything I expected, really, you know, the shooting is really nice, the story is amazing. Um, good job, Sega. And I really hope they uh, make turn this into a series, because it is well deserving of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> really up. I think I've said everything I wanted to, and yeah. See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.